Starting myself out is live. I'm here with Mercury Black. We are going to have a fun show for you today. That's right. I'm calling it a show because I am pompous enough to consider this a show rather than just a low budget YouTube channel. How you doing, buddy? Uh, good. Not as hyper as you, but that's infectious. So I may catch up to you mood wise very quickly here. Yeah, I'm floating, man. I'm I'm uh, I'm about as uh, energized as you can get without doing drugs. So I'm gonna pull up the live stream here, just <laughs> just so just so we can see who is commenting. We've got five people watching now. Okay, so what we're gonna do today for everybody, we're gonna wait for some more people to join. Once we've got about, I hope we can get about ten people on, and then we're gonna sh show you some clips. We've got a Henry Rollins clip we're gonna play for you. Then we're gonna respond to that clip. Then we've got a Peterson clip we're gonna play for you. Or no. Are we going to play Peterson or Weinstein first? Wein is it Wein uh, Weinstein, right? That's what they prefer. Weinstein. Yeah, yeah. Peterson yeah. or Weinstein first? Uh, I don't give okay, a shit. Uh, You're the uh, we've match. got three clips for you. We're going to play a Peterson clip, a, or excuse me, a Henry Rollins clip, a Weinstein clip, and a Jordan Peterson clip. That's the order we're going to do it in. And then we're going to respond to each clip one at a time. And the Weinstein and the Peterson clip particularly – have a particular there's a there's a through line a connection between those two that we want to share with everyone so mercury and i are going to show you those clips i think it, I think it connects to the first one as well um the last two more obviously connect but i think rollins is making a very similar point okay i haven't seen that one yet so as soon as i watch the rollins one with you here then i'll understand that but that will be my first. Oh, okay, awesome. Yeah, that will be it. my first reaction. So we're about to show you some clips, everyone. I just want to wait for a few people to get here. If you're just joining us, go ahead and write in the comment section. And once we get a few more people here, we will start showing you some clips. Uh, and, uh, tell us yeah, hi if you want to. If we're just wasting a minute here to w let a few people come on, uh, I assume most people know who Weinstein and Peterson are, but a lot of this audience might have no idea who Henry Rollins is. Um, he was the singer for the old punk band Black Flag. Um, after that, he's done writing, spoken word. Um, he's acted uh, quite a bit, and um, he's had Rollins Band. So he's a musician and more broadly an artist. Um, but yeah, yeah, he's an old punk like me, so we're going to get um, a little more diversity of thought here than just playing stuffy intellectuals that we love. Yes, yeah. So we're about to start that clip for you all. I see a few more people just joined. Andrew Jokum, the founder of this channel, our great grandfather, the godfather of this channel is here. He says, Henry Rollins has appeared in many of my dreams as an archetype of high conscientiousness and positive disagreeableness. That is awesome, Andrew. Uh, we got to have you back on again soon because you're your last time when you shared your dreams, people wanted to hear about it. So we've got, uh, I think we should just start playing the clip. Did you have something you want to say? Yeah, I wanted to say one thing, because as um, I was like making a coffee and preparing to come on, uh, I was thinking, I really want to thank uh, both you and Andrew for this. Um, I would not be doing this if it wasn't for Andrew. Uh, we, like he did something at the right time, the right place, and built something powerful that we stepped into. Um, and then you, Ryan, I could not be doing this without you. You are all the structure and format. And so I've noticed some people directing gratitude towards me, like in messages and whatnot, but I would be absolutely useless to all of you without Andrew and Ryan. It's like, yes, to a certain degree, I'm a natural resource, but I am not one that was doing anything for the outer world of my own. And I don't think I could have. It took both Andrew and Ryan to create all this. And I wanted to thank both of you guys because you've given me a really beautiful opportunity to yes. help people in a way that I'm actually able to. Well, it's um, a pleasure, man. We, we love you. So uh, you're an awesome person and you are a fantastic resource and you are very helpful to, to have. And you do just as much, as much as you don't feel like it, you do a lot for this channel. So your energy is vital. But let's go ahead and play this clip. Yeah. We've got people coming in and out, and uh, I just want to satisfy their uh, needs so they don't think we're just baiting them. So I will mute. I'm going to mute this mic, and I'm going to go over here. So bear with me because this is going to take a second.
Okay. You should be able to see my screen. You see it? Yep. Boom. Here's number one. Uh, so, I grew up in Washington, D.C., uh, seeing a few things in the streets of my hometown, but a relatively soft-handed, wide-eyed boy. And so I left Washington, D.C. into the world of Black Flag, the band, and uh, I got America 101 right in the teeth. And uh, the first American tour I did, I started off as one thing. By the tour, the time the tour came to an end, I was quite another thing. It's like, wow, I'm 20 years old, and I saw a guy get stabbed. I have had cops plant drugs on me. I've been surveilled i've been wiretapped i've had religious groups protest my shows i've had cops pull me out of the van and accuse me of doing all manner of satanic and illegal things wow. i have been terrified i've been in fights i've seen blood i've seen desperation and people i've met in los angeles are now dead i started meeting people who would soon die of overdosing on heroin you might have to crystal talk meth, every so often suicide so and all straight. kinds of misadventure so you know. and so i started becoming oh, oh. kind of jaded guy who like i know death and it was a weird thing to be like 20 something years old and like not everyone's going to make it and not even trying to be <laughs> macho about it just like that was my reality oh my and from that i did i got a whole bunch of cynicism it made me very cynical and my cynicism i thought was an awareness i thought my cynicism was me seeing through the bullshit Isn't he famous and for by the things? early 90s my cynicism Thanks. was like, this unimaginably a bunch of different level. things and i sought to yes. yes. myself I, I sought to harvest and grow more cynicism. I thought I was never cynical enough. Sometimes, Henry, people are nice. No, they're not. They're just gaming for strategic positioning. They're never <laughs> nice. They're just trying to get what they can out of you. It's all bullshit. People <laughs> suck. Now, that two-word sentence, people suck, period, is a very easy conclusion to come to, right? Like you women, you're at the workplace, and the guy's staring at your tits when he's talking to you. You want to take your tear his fucking nuts off and say, here's your fucking lunch, pal. Right? And so they call off in traffic. Something bad happens, and you can start painting with a broad brush. You can start judging uh, the many by the actions of the few. And I did that for a long time. Self-preservation. People suck. We're all whores. That's why I wouldn't want to be a parent. Because I'd be a super and dad. Cynicism is I'd like be any other ideology. Down. I'd be like there at 3 p.m. every day for the kid. What are we going to do today, man? All right, let's play in the backyard. Dad, will you play me? Of course I'll play in the backyard. <laughs> fucking dad, man. I'm going to rock your world. I'm going to make you like me. So when you turn 16, you won't stab me in the face when I'm asleep. So is he a comedian as well? And one day I have to sit the kid down at the table. Yeah, so his like, spoken word is involved. Did involved in the story. Did I do something wrong, kid? No, no, you're a great fucking kid. I just got to tell you about the ways of the world. Okay, look, your mom's a bitch and I'm an asshole, okay? And people are just a bunch of whores, and soon you'll be one of those assholes too. And if you don't kill me in my sleep, I'll be thinking about killing you in your sleep. <laughs> He'll start making the more serious He's point now. Here in the basement playing Led Zeppelin 40 you all weekend so you get your shit straight. But until then, just know that your dad is fucked, and that's what you're going to get. You're going to inherit my fuckness. Now go outside and score some street drugs. Get the fuck out of here. Dad wants to download some fucking internet porn. And so parenting is, is out of the question for me. And so when my cynicism was reaching these unimaginable levels, like, oh, uh, I started meeting some of the most amazing, humanitarian, strong, and selfless people I've ever met in my life. And then I started wow. uh, coming to the conclusion that cynicism is nothing but intellectual uh, cowardice. It's basically you not taking the time to deal with what is. It's like, oh, no, if they're all fucked, I don't have to really do any work assessing humanity. I'll just know that they're all fucked. <laughs> and I'll just judge them from here and feel innately superior. And so over the years, I've become further and further stripped of my cynicism. Can you relate to I that? I realize that cynicism is weakness that I cannot yeah, support. To his and degree. So I felt but very vulnerable. Like, oh, somewhat. No, I'm cynical. Oh, no, I'm going to have to take the world to face value. No, how will I survive? Well, it's fucking hard to just to, to deal with everyone as an individual and think of other people as you think of yourself. And I'm not trying to get you to go kumbaya and go out and kick a hacky sack, smear yourself with patchouli oil or hug a fucking tree. But what I'm sick of is people looking at like a few people walking into a mosque like they're Islamo fascists. They're going into an Islamo fascist hangout. We need to kill them all. Because that kind of fucking ignorance and judgment just has to stop because we'll never get the P Funk Ramon's Devo block part. Can we just pause it for they a second? Um can you just give us a couple quick thoughts? 
and then I'll keep playing it. So I see the connection to it's just all these ideologies and things, these simple ways to look at the world are, yes, just intellectual cowardice or laziness. It's not wanting to deal with what's actually there. So you put up a shield of some sort. Um, and for me, I never had his full blown cynicism to that degree, um, but I had it towards certain aspects of society. I was that cynical about the mainstream corporate, you know, sheep, dumb jocks, like portions of society. And I saw uh, the good in others, but, and older in life, like he says, he's not all fucking uh, hug a tree and love everyone. It's I went from somewhere closer to where he is there to a certain degree to I am much more fucking hippie, hug a tree, love everyone, at the, like at this point. Um, but also I do find this connects to uh, the next two clips we're going to bring up is about people being too hard on themselves. And this is just another form of that, but taken to the extreme. That cynicism of fuck all humanity, it's all garbage, we're all whores and assholes. So you're doing it to yourself and the whole world at the same time. Right. And it, that shield that you put up blocks all the good in the world from you. Like it protects you from some of the bad in the world, but it shields you from seeing all the good that he said he eventually saw. Right on. Let's finish it. Yeah. And uh, just so everyone knows, the reason that I uh, we're talking over it a little bit is because I'm pretty sure you have to with certain videos in order to uh, not get a copyright infringement. But I'm not exactly sure the precise rules. So just bear I with us. I don't know what any of the rules are. Yeah. And Andrew wrote in and said maybe we should just pause it every time we want to talk so it's not uh, too confusing. So anyways, oh. there's only a couple of minutes left. So I think we'll get away with it wide if we're still thinking about shit like if that is still a roadblock this time next year we got worry and so more and more i travel farther and farther out into the world because i'm a curious boy uh the more amazing people i meet thus stripping me more and more of my cynicism i don't know if i have any more left and i it's so weird to say that to you because i used to think that my my cynicism was my shield and so now i'm out there shieldless again this uh robs me of my cynicism i would love to be cynical it was so much fun being cynical but i can't do it anymore and i and i I don't want to turn into it like fun and easy guy. to be so I don't want to be floating Buddha trying to hug people because that's not me either. But it's it's a lot of work not being cynical. Sometimes it just fucking sucks because you have to listen to both sides of every argument. Ah! <laughs> All that time it takes, damn. <laughs> so anyway, there's that. Here's another thing, a revolution, a revelation I came up to uh, about the beginning of 2007. I came to the conclusion that I was more angry than I was in 2006, which I thought was fan-fucking-tastic. You know, I don't want to ever lose my anger because the anger I like. I don't want to become lovey-dovey guy because that to me is like the first sign of defeat. We're like, oh, everyone's good. I love everyone. Fuck that shit. There's so many sick, awful motherfuckers in the world. And if you don't stand them up and stand them down and call them what they really are, we'll never get the P-Funk Ramones Devo block party going. And so if you think things are cool, I think you're wrong. And so anyway, basically, there's work to be done. And so at the beginning of 2007, I said, fuck it. I have contempt for life because I'm not the happiest baby uh, in the world. I don't wake up every day. I love life. Most of the time, I fucking hate life. Most of the time, life is a flatline fucking existential nightmare for me, and I fucking hate it, and I want to check out all the time. There you go. Now you know the truth. That's intense. Um, okay, I'm going to get out of this shit and give you a better microphone. And also to show an example that, again, it's like Peterson said, don't get resentful when life is difficult. Like, he's not saying life is easy and it's all love and rainbows for him. He still deals with a lot of the fucked up emotional shit that drove Black Flag and drove all of his art. But he's strong enough to not take the cowardice of just being cynical to deal with it. Instead, right. life fucking sucks. It's hard. I'm still going to listen to both sides of every argument. I'm still going to keep an open mind and let pe like look at what people are rather than just judging them instantly on... A simple ideology. So again, this is just an ideology. People suck, period. And mm -hmm. then I can 
filter all the world through that. And it makes every reaction easy when you have any of these ideologies, even like racism is just picking a certain portion of the population and doing that to them. Now, I don't need to think about any of them as individuals. I can think of them as one big group and yes. write them off with cynicism. Cynicism is also a predisposition. Some people, I think, are more prone to cynicism than others. So I think that's something to watch out for. If, if there are those of us that have personalities that are more prone to cynicism, that's important to know because it's, it's simply a proclivity towards a certain mindset, towards a certain attitude. And if you can be aware of that proclivity, it's easier to work with it rather than having it get you by the balls. And I'm not doing like, I didn't want to show this for the sake of people who are cynical or bad. This isn't a finger wagging thing or judging people who are cynical. It's, I think the cynicism is bad for the individual. Yeah. It's, while it is that shield and it seems easier, you cannot connect to I the world I from you. behind that shield. And if you can't see yourself in any other human being, like especially if you can't see yourself in anyone, you're cynical towards everyone. Or if you can't see yourself in the 1%, if you can't see yourself in someone of a different race or a different gender, how are you going to feel any oneness with a deer in the woods or the ground that you're standing on? or mm. the stars in the sky. And that barrier between people, when you can get past that and see yourself in everyone, and you drop those shields, you can then go past and see yourself in even more of reality. And there are wonderful things to experience and connect to that you block off with cynicism, racism, or any ideology. If you hate the communists or the patriarchy, you're cutting yourself off from part of yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, can I read a few of the comments before we do the next clip? Oh, whatever the fuck you want to do. Um, okay, so we have the gracious Timmy Watsit that says, and sorry if I mispronounced your last name, do you have a Patreon? I'd love to donate. You do good for the world. Uh, we have, a, uh, we have a, a PayPal button. And now we have a subscribe star. Thank you so much for saying that. That's awesome. Uh, we are really honored to hear that you want to donate. We actually just started receiving our first donations. Uh, so that's fantastic. I will put that in the description. So just give me a second. I forgot to put it in the description. And then I will pop it right in. Thank you so much, Timmy. Uh, you know, it's so funny. What a journey we've been on. Uh, we. Uh, oh, now he says, sorry, wrong channel. Oh my God, he's the, the master troll. I was just going to say, it's so funny what a journey we've been on because uh, from the very beginning, Timmy started trolling us hard and uh, he got us again. He got us again. You know he did that on purpose. That's hilarious. So, uh, Timmy, you're always keeping me on my toes. So, congratulations. Chris M says, that man is my spirit animal. Uh, he's talking about Rollins, I believe. Nice to see you, Chris. Thanks for joining us. James says, thanks. Good to see you guys. Uh, James, it's great to see you as well. Timmy said to Mercury, what happened to your hair? Um, I go away for a couple weeks and you turn into that. I love it though. And, uh, that's great. Mercury's hair. And then we have a few others up top, but I think I responded to those in the chat. So we're good. And then Timmy said that wasn't trolling. Well, whatever it was, it was a good, it was a good. Uh, I never know what the fuck to make of his comments now. I know, he's hilarious. Yeah, we, we don't know what he's up to. We have no idea. Um, yeah, anything I, you want to say before I start the next? Anything you want to say before I start the next clip? No. Roll okay. It. Let's roll the next one. I'm gonna mute this one. All right. I'm just give me a second. I got to share my screen. And those tensions between, you know, it's sort of back to us as a worker and us as a soul. Many of us are optimizing one to the, at the expense of the other. And 
I struggle with social media and I struggle with people making threats against uh, our families and I struggle with um, just how much pain people are in. And if there's one message I would like to push out there, um, you're responsible, everybody, all of us, myself included, struggle, struggle, struggle mightily because you, it's nobody else's job to do your struggle for you. Now, with that said, if you're struggling and you're trying and you're trying to figure out how to better yourself and where you failed, where you've let down your family, your friends, your workers, all this kind of stuff, give yourself a break. You know, if 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 it's not working out, I, I have a lifelong relationship with failure and success. There's been no period of my life where both haven't been present in one form or another. And I, I do wish to say that a lot of times people think this is glamorous. I'm about to go you know, do a show with Sam Harris. People are going to listen in on two guys having a conversation on stage. It's completely crazy, but I'm always trying to figure out how to make sure that those people get maximum value. And uh, why I'm doing this podcast, you know, just give yourself a break. You owe us. You owe us your struggle. You don't owe your family or your coworkers or your, your lovers or your family members success. Um, as long as you're in there and you're picking yourself up, recognize that this this new situation with the economy that doesn't have the juice to sustain our institutions has caused the people who've risen to the top of those institutions to get quite brutal and cruel. Everybody is lying at the moment. Nobody's really a truth teller. Um, try to keep your humanity about you. Try to re recognize that if you're failing, if things aren't where you want them to be and you're struggling and you're trying to figure out what you're doing wrong, what you could do, it's not necessarily all your fault. We are in a global situation. I have not met the people who are honest, kind, good, successful. Nobody that I've met is, che is checking all the boxes. Uh, nobody's getting all 10. So I just think that's important that doesn't get pushed out enough. Either people want to hold society responsible for their failures, which is not reasonable. You have to struggle, you have to try. Uh, or they want to say you're 100% responsible for your failures, which is total nonsense. Boom. All right, hold on. Stop sharing. Stop it. Sorry, hold on here. How do I get this thing to... Boom. All right, mute this. All right. Oh no. Okay. Sorry, I'm I'm juggling here. I'm I'm a professional juggler. I I juggle computer monitors and audio and uh, Mercury and comments and you know just watch just just laugh at me if I fall on my face. Um, okay. So why don't you take it away? I'm going to actually post. Thanks to Timmy. He reminded me I forgot to post the donation uh, options in the description. I'm going to post the donation options in the description. If you want to donate, you'll see those there. Thank you so much. That's all I'll say about that. Okay, so you want me to go with a uh, reaction to that video? Yeah, I'm relying on you for generating something meaningful because uh, I'm juggling. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, and I'm the one who uh, picked out that clip but when we posted it a while ago. And then um, the clip we're going to play next to Peterson came out a couple weeks later, which I found sort of synchronistic, that it's essentially the same, very similar message that I thought was just one of the greatest things I've heard. Wein like, and Eric Weinstein's a genius. Like, he's just an incredible intellect. But that's still my favorite thing I've heard him say yet. And... I used to have much more of this feeling that the average person out there was worse than they thought they were, that the average person was doing a lot of bad things and feeling very self-righteous about it. And I'm aware that the I'm not getting um, like a good random sample of the population through this channel. I'm aware it's being filtered and we're attracting um, a certain demographic of people that isn't representative of everyone but i'm shocked that so far everyone i think without exception that i've spoken to over the past two years so both this channel and people i've worked with privately with the exception of i think one person um this is their problem they're trying their hardest to do well 
and they're still beating themselves up way the fuck too much. Um, people are being, at least the people who are coming to me are being way too fucking hard on themselves. Uh, repeatedly, people will say, um, as we're doing, you know, a recorded video with an audience member, they'll say, okay, I think I'll, I won't want this next part to be public, but I'd like to tell you something. And then when they tell me, just as they're speaking, I think like, what on earth is wrong with this? They're sharing some emotional vulnerability sometimes, or they're sharing some mistake they made, but it's always the people coming to me, it's mistakes they made, it's weaknesses, it's not intentional evil, and they're struggling to do better. And I don't think there's a certain group of people ju that just are not giving themselves enough credit. And it's funny because I've worked with one person privately um, that's sort of a borderline personality disorder. And they're funny because they've got two versions. One occasionally where this worse version of them, a subpersonality, it is entirely self-justifying and blames the entire world for everything and is ready to do things they know they shouldn't do because the world has done this. And so it's justified. And yet the majority of the time they're in a mode um, that they're trying to do better and are beating up on themselves way too much. And that person just has such a hard time being fair with themselves. Most of the time they're way too hard on themselves. And then occasionally the subpersonality comes out that is like the extreme reaction to that of no, fuck the world. The world's all fucked up. It's the world's fault. That's and a great so, yeah. response. That's a great response. You know, I was thinking, what's up, Boy Meets Wart is here. Uh, by the way, Timmy, uh, Timmy tried to to sneak one past us with his trolling plans, and he said, uh, "Don't respond to this because I found him out." He said, "Mercury, this is a serious question. Have you ever? I've been struggling with psychosis. Are you on Ligma medication?" And just so you know, Ligma is kind of a little trick. A Ligma, you know what? Lick my. Uh, so it's kind of like D's nuts. So anyways, we caught him. So uh, T Timmy says, I have passed level one of trolling. Um, so I'm, I've passed level one. Hopefully I graduate enough soon. And maybe if I graduate to level five, he'll actually consider giving a donation. That would be pretty cool. Uh, Boy Meets Wart, love all those guys. Can't stick around right now, but I'm excited to listen to this convo tonight. Cheers, everyone. We love you, Boy Meets Wart. I really loved uh, the other day you said something really sweet. Uh, you said that you weren't going to be able to do the Sacred Flip program, but you would want to donate just to support people that want to. And I thought that that was just a, a true statement of your character, and you've been with us since the start. So thank you. Um, okay, so we've we've got we've graduated past level one with Timmy. I'm really feeling good about that. If if there's anything I've gotten out of doing this YouTube channel, it's learning how to deal with Timmy what's it the the chief troll i don't know why i'm giving him so much attention it's probably not the best strategy <laughs> i have to put me i need to be demoted to zero uh, level zero again now i honestly have no idea what to deal like what to make of him at all i have no I idea if he's sincere or fucking with us and i have no idea if it's an attempt to make us feel good through the humor uh yeah i have no idea what to make of that guy yeah, we're just we're just noobs, so we have no idea what to do. Um, anyways, he so, seems to enjoy that I don't know what to make of him, so just, I'm fine. He, he just seems wants to love, enjoy the like game. every other human being. He just wants some love, and that's his way of asking for it. I'm all for it. Um, anyways, uh, okay, let's do. I don't really have anything to say because I'm juggling so hard. I'm like, I feel like I'm at the circus, so I just I, it's hard for me to stay focused because I'm juggling so many different roll, things. Roll the next clip and then that's one thing off your plate that's all the clips done yes let's play the next clip mercury with the clutch advice as usual okay just bear with me for one second everyone we're gonna play the last clip it's a clip that i've played recently on this channel but we're gonna play it again because mercury wanted the chance to respond to it so you're gonna get a minute and a half of repetition if you've seen it before, but I think it bears repeating. Boom, other microphone on, screen share, juggling master, Jordan Peterson, our hero, oh my God. 
quite hard on themselves. And, you know, this is uh, one of the on. reasons I think actually that people are, are quite hard on themselves. And, you know, this is one of the reasons that I believe that the presumption of innocence that characterizes our legal system is such an absolute bloody miracle. I cannot figure out how in the world that idea ever came about and developed universal acceptance. It's so unlikely, you know, if you deal with people in a clinical setting and they're somewhat depressed, which is not uncommon, and they've done something that they are guilty about, independent of whether they've done something that they feel guilty about, independent of whether they're actually guilty, they tend to take themselves apart. Now, that's especially true if you happen to be high in trait neuroticism, which is one of the big five traits, extroversion, which is a positive emotion dimension, neuroticism, a negative emotion dimension, agreeableness, which is compassion and politeness, conscientiousness, which is orderliness and industrious, and openness, which is intellect and openness proper, something like creativity. If you're higher than normal in neuroticism, it's very easy to take yourself apart if you're feeling guilty about something that you've done. And people, many people will feel guilty about what they've okay. done at the drop of a hat. I mean, first of all, they accuse themselves of their own shortcomings. And then if they are accused by someone else, it's often very, very difficult for them to mount their own defense, you know, to believe in their own innocence. You know, hi, folks, Dr. Peterson released a video. You want to react to me reacting? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember what you said. I crack myself up. You know, let's watch my reaction video and do a reaction video to my reaction video. Then you could follow that up with a reaction to your reaction and you could make it like a infinite feedback that continues for years on the channel where you keep reacting to your reaction of your previous reaction. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. But what Peterson said, presumption of innocence, I find brings the first, I'm glad you played it in that order. Rollins pointed out the problem of cynicism, and that's that the opposite of the presumption of innocence with the world. That's the presumption of you're a whore and an asshole. And then Weinstein was pointing out that we're often too hard on ourselves. Same, if you're trying, you've got to give yourself the presumption of innocence. Um, and Peterson there ties it both together that okay, like the world's hard. It's easy to think, yeah, everyone's a fucking liar. Everyone's an asshole. And yeah, you're really flawed and you've made a lot of mistakes. So it will be easy to think I'm a worthless piece of shit. But that's the easier answer that doesn't take you anywhere. It's a bigger risk to try to trust people again after you've realized people are liars. But not everybody is a fucking liar. And you won't find the honest people if you don't give people that fair shot, the presumption of innocence, to assume incompetence before malintent when you're not sure about it, and both with yourself and the outside world. I think that brings it all together. Beautifully said. We actually just talked to an audience member last night, and they were very hard on themselves, kind of like you were talking about earlier, some of the people. And yeah, yeah. it's just tearing themselves apart, not giving themselves any credit, not able to focus on any of the positive accomplishments, only focusing on the negative. And it bears some attention. I mean, yeah, we do need to be self-critical. We do need to be honest with ourselves. We do need to admit when we're wrong. We do need to take an honest moral inventory and understand where we're falling short in life. But we also need to understand when we are overreacting and going into that constant self-criticism in 12 Steps. Bill W., who founded Alcoholics Anonymous, called it morbid self-reflection. We have to avoid morbid self-reflection. There's, there is positive self-reflection, but morbid self-reflection is you're basically just reflecting on your shortcomings over and over and over. And they just, they feed on each other. And then when you focus on where you're falling short, you're much more likely to continue falling short. Timmy Watsit says, I have to go. I have exams tomorrow. Please pray for me and wish me luck. Okay. Luck well, luck with your exams, my friend. Um, thanks for stopping in. 
Okay. So uh, also, what else was I going to say here? Oh, I wanted to give a shout out to someone because we had we actually got a really awesome donation this morning for from somebody, and I want to get their name. But uh, if you want to talk for a second while I pull that out, because I want to give out a shout out. And I'm not going to say your last name, so don't worry. Uh, I had no idea we'd gotten donations yet. Yeah, I hadn't had a chance to tell you. We got we got our first donation for a hundred dollars. We got a donation for a hundred dollars. I was pretty pumped about that from John R. I'm not going to say his last name because he, I want to keep his privacy. Uh, but John, if you're watching this, thank you so much for your donation. Uh, wow. You left us a really sweet note. Uh, you said, keep up the good work, guys. Really happy to support this awesome project and the positive work you two are doing. Cheers. So thank you, John. Uh, that was just, that made my day. I woke up to that this morning while I was doing my morning routine. And uh, I just, it made my day. I mean, we've been working our butts off. So the fact that you uh, were our first donator after we set that up was really touching. So I can't thank you enough. And I will, I'll probably send you a thank you email as well for being our first donator. You, you, you're you awesome. So That feels surreal to me. I don't feel like I'm fully processing that info to tell you the truth. Well, get used to it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I feel surreal to me too. So Are you shocked? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why are you so shocked? Um, You're making a difference and people are appreciating it. And uh, that feels really good to, to see that, don't you think? Yeah, I guess I stepped out of the world before this new sort of economy emerged. So this is all surreal to me. Um, yeah, like yeah. the way people support things online didn't exist as much when I, I was back in the world. This is a weird thing to me. Yeah. And, um, you know, people are, there's a lot of good people out there and I'm just like, I decided I saw that this morning. Um, I'm just going to keep working my tail off to produce good content on this channel and, um, let the chips fall where they may. And uh, big, big shout out to Andrew Jokum for setting us up with this opportunity. Big shout out to all of you listeners out there who are continuing to support us. Uh, please uh, hit that like button. It does help the channel. If you subscribe, hit the like button, the notification bell. I don't, you know, if you don't want to, that's fine. But if you feel like it, it does help the channel. Uh, and thank you so much for joining us here. If anybody has any questions for us, speak now. I do have some work I have to go do, uh, including I have to finish some video editing for uh, the Dr. Strachan series for a few other things. So I have to move on. But uh, yeah, and people did just start hitting like, so thank you for doing that. Any questions, any comments that you want to ask Mercury and I, or just say to us, and we'd be happy to take a couple of minutes to respond to some of those things if you want to write in a comment. Otherwise, I'll be getting going here in a minute. Uh, I have a question for you, actually, something I've been thinking about lately. Sure thing. Uh, so it's easier to break something than to build it, right? Yeah, uh, Rome wasn't created in a day, but it sure as hell fell apart in one. Yeah, and then our conversation with Nolan. Oh, shit. Okay, so we didn't put that out yet, the killing joke. But, uh, like, the point made there that we're all one bad day away from insanity. And the way I've been thinking, like, it's the same as with an object. It's much easier to break a person. Like, when you want to, if you want to improve someone else, it's like, no, unless they decide they want to make improvements, they're not going to make them. But you can very much take someone and torture them and break them. And you can cause people like, so with a person, you can break them and push them to the evil more easily than you could just walk up to a stranger and push them to the good. It's mm -hmm. easier to break something than to build something. So why isn't everything broken? And if we're that much easier to brainwash to the evil, if it's just one bad day away from snapping and becoming resentful, and it's so much more work to move towards the good, why are we still here? Especially with how long we've had nuclear weapons and the way societies advanced, the way, look at what Hitler could do to a whole population so quickly. Mm. Why the fuck are we still here? Why isn't everything broken? It's easier to break things and to build them. Are you talking to me or are you talking to someone way smarter than me that can answer that question? 
I'm asking you because that's what I've been thinking about lately. Why uh, isn't everything broken? And why aren't we all get like that whole eye for an eye leads to everybody being blind? Yeah. Why the fuck are we why blind? Why does anything work at all? Peterson talks about that sometimes. It's amazing. He says how it's amazing that the lights are on. It's amazing that people show up to work. It's amazing that this weird machine we call society is still running. It's amazing that anything goes right at all ever. I think that that's or, a beautiful question. And um, go ahead. Or the way they're saying Russians or whoever, I don't know who's doing it, but like online, you can with memes and with protests, like agitate both ends to create conflict. You arrange a pro-life debate on one side of the street and a pro-choice debate on the other and yeah. you inflame it. If it's so easy to inflame us this way, why aren't, why isn't everyone blind? Why isn't everything broken? Let's yeah, see. absolutely. Let me let me give a stab. I'll give a stab at that question. Um, and okay. so we have a comment here. Sarment, good question. God protected us, probably question mark. So that was kind of the direction I was going. I mean, I, I don't you don't have to use the word God, but the idea that there's a spark of divinity within each human that um, that keeps us aiming high for some reason, that, that, that there is something that wants to move towards a cohesive functional future. Now there's two ways you can look at this. There's Dr. Strachan's way, my mentor who says the universe strives for functionality. So whatever works, the universe is going to strive to create that both in the genetic evolution of human beings in the animal kingdom, in the, the, the general uh, ebbs and flows of the entire universe. That's his theory. Okay. So there's no morality in that. It's just trying to function. He doesn't believe in universal morality. Um, what the hell? Oh, Siri. What the? F <laughs> what? Was Siri listening to that whole thing? That's bizarre. Um, did you hear what she said? She said, I'm sorry. I don't have an answer to that. Oh, no, I didn't hear what it said. Yeah, that's what Siri said. And I didn't touch my – my hands weren't on my phone. It was just sitting on the counter. Nobody touched – asked for Siri. That's funny. But anyways, um, so one and way you can look at it is that the universe is striving, that human beings are striving for functionality. That's the one way. So whatever functions is going to uh, – that's where evolution is going to go is the maximal functionality. Now, the other way to look at it is from a standpoint of good and evil, morality, and that you could say that God is good and God wants us to do good and God put a spark of divinity within each person that allows us to move in that moral landscape between good and evil and that more people have uh, are, are pushed towards the good than the bad, and that's why things are working. I tend to fall in between because I believe that you can look at the world from a standpoint of there is no universal morality because the universe doesn't really give a shit. Humans create meaning out of things. Like right now, uh, Joe Rogan said the other day on his podcast, right now a black hole is swallowing a star. It doesn't give a shit about like right now a coyote is eating a little fluffy bunny. Like, you know, these right now a child is starving, blah, 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 blah. So it's harder to make a case from universal morality from that perspective. Now, on the other hand, I do believe that uh, God is good. I do believe that there is a great spirit. I do believe that there is a divinity that is uh, some sort of shining light that's expanding itself throughout the universe. That's my personal little believey that makes me feel fuzzy inside. And I, I, I hold to that. So I hold both of those perspectives. I do think that there's the perspective where uh, the universe is indifferent and it just wants itself to function. And uh, mm -hmm. typically good things function like a society of people who care about each other is going to function better than a society of backstabbing assholes. But on the other hand, um, there, there is this landscape of good and evil that we have to navigate uh, as human beings. So I don't take a hard line like uh, Strachan does, and I don't take a hard line on morality like Peterson does. I kind of uh, balance in between. And I think we could almost make an analogy here and a bridge between science and religion where when science is looking at our galaxy and factoring, like trying to run the equations of energy and gravity, they found that they couldn't balance it without adding dark matter. Now, mm. scientists do not know what dark matter is. They cannot perceive it directly, but to balance the equations of gravity, they have had to assume that it is there and they are trying to figure out what it is. So what religions have been doing, have been realizing that if you run the numbers on the ground, it should be easier to corrupt us than to save us. It seems yeah. like evil should win rather than good. 
yet we're surviving. It's as if there is this dark matter of goodness that we don't know what it is. And so we call it God instead of dark matter. And we don't know exactly what it is. We can't perceive it directly with scientific instruments, but we know some, it seems like something must be there. There must be some sort of guardrail. Yeah. And we're calling that God and trying to figure out what that is. Yeah, and uh, Sarmit says, okay, that's fine. God bless, smiley face, smiley face. Yeah, and I'm, just to qualify, I'm not saying that I don't believe in God. I'm just saying that you can look at it both ways. You can look at it from the more scientific perspective that the universe is simply striving for what's functional and thrive and what helps it to thrive and create new things. Or you can look at it from the perspective of uh, heaven and hell. I think that both are different perspectives and that I don't think they necessarily have to contradict each other. I think that there is a, an overlay zone where they can meet and dance together, but I do need to go. And uh, if you have any last words, Merck, uh, go ahead and speak them out, but I'm going to have to jump off because I've got some video editing to do. And yeah. So and my thoughts on that are, yes, I do think God exists. I just don't know what God is. I'm still working that out, but I don't think the scientific and the theological cancel each other one bit. I think there's room in actual reality for Strachan's view and the other that you mentioned. I see them as working together. Absolutely. And just let's just leave it with James here. James says cool dark matter analogy. So there you go, Mercury. Uh, James liked your dark matter analogy. Fantastic. I'm going to hop off. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Mercury, uh, I really appreciate you working with us on, on all these videos. And you've just been one of the cornerstones of this channel. So I know that you spent a lot of time thanking Andrew and I at the beginning for allowing you to have this opportunity or giving you the platform to help other people. But uh, the only reason it works is because you have something to offer. So and, uh, yeah, I thanked you guys also. Thank you to the audience. Um, everyone who's been participating and uh yeah may dark matter bless you all later everyone